All right, you're on. Hi, I'm Mike Moskowitz, uh, head women's basketball coach at Alfred University, uh, which is in New York, kind of south of Rochester and, and west of Binghamton. I've been here for two years. Um, previously, I was a middle school teacher um, and a volunteer at a, at a women's basketball program on the eastern part of the state. And today, I, I'd like to talk to you about top 10 things to ask coaches um, when being, being recruited. Um, this can really be for any sport, but obviously will be a sport specific today to basketball. The first question I think uh, is, is really important, regardless of if you're going to play sports or not, is how do you see me fitting in here? Um, and, and really, you know, college is a really important um, time in our lives, and they're four of the most important years. Um, you're going to grow as a person tremendously here. And I think it's important to, to figure out, um, you know, how you'd fit in, um, not just academically, um, not just athletically, but also socially. Um, and, and there are a lot of things that go into that. So we'll talk about that now. Um, I think if, if you're talking to a coach, you want to leave it open-ended and see where they kind of go with that. As a, as a coach myself, I do that with our recruits. Um, I'll ask them questions that I purposely leave open-ended to see where their priorities lie. Um, if they start talking about basketball first, um, that might not be the best indicator because there's a lot more, you know, to, to playing sports in, in college than just basketball. But I'm sure it'll come up anyway. So you want to find out what's your opportunity to play as a freshman. Some people are, you know, just want to go to a place where, where they can play for all four years. Some people want to be a part of something bigger than themselves and they don't care at all about playing time. Others kind of want to mix and want to go through the process of the struggle your first few years and hopefully earning your time, you know, as, as the years go by. Um, you want to find out when they see you making an impact. So they'll be pretty, they should be pretty upfront and let you know, you know, as a freshman, I expect you to compete for minutes or, you know, we do have some depth at your position and, and it could take a little while, but, you know, you're going to learn from some of the best um, and, and kind of ask those types of questions. In terms of personality and general fit and how comfortable you are at the school um, and with your team, you got to find out what the team dynamic is like and really see if the coach is, is like a used car salesman and, and just trying to sell you something that it's not or, or find out the reality. And we'll talk about that more later. Um, you want to find out where people are from and how much diversity there is, not only within your, your team, but also at the school. Um, find out how many different majors and minors are offered. Um, what percentage, you know, is it, is it an engineering heavy school? Is it an art heavy school? Is it a business heavy school? Or is there, you know, is it more of a liberal arts school that has a, a good balance? And then find out within your team what that dynamic is like. Um, because I think diversity, yes, it has to do, you know, with religion and um, with eth uh, ethnical backgrounds, but I think also it, it has to do with perspective and not just where you, you know, where you're raised and, and, and all that, but, but, you know, some people have, you know, an, an engineering type mind, some people have a, an art type mind, and those are, those are two totally different people. Um, and then somebody with a business mind is somewhere in the middle. Um, so I think that's important and that'll help you grow and build empathy and all that, which will be important for you in your, in your adult life. Next question, um, what type of academic support so obviously you're going to, to college to, to get an educational degree. Um, so you need to find out what kind of support is available on campus and within the program. So this is important. You got to find out, and, and honestly, the coach might not know, but I'm sure you can find it on the website. What percentage of the professors are full-time, which means they probably live in the area. They teach three to five classes or they teach two or three classes with, you know, full-time research on campus. Um, they offer office hours, which is my second point that's super important, versus adjunct faculty are going to be part-time. They're probably going to teach only one or two classes. They're probably going to have a full-time job elsewhere and just come into town, you know, twice a week at night, and therefore their office hours are, yeah, just call me or email me whenever you need. Um, that, that, that can make a big difference there in terms of your relationships with your professors. Academic requirements um, within the department and on your team. Um, and then with that, you know, finding out what that minimum is because you are going to have a class that you struggle in. You are going to have a semester where you, you struggle because of a variety of reasons, but definitely using the next few bullets um, as your resources to help you. So we offer study halls um, in our basketball program the first seven weeks. So basically August 25th until October 10th, um, we'll have it four times a week for all incoming freshmen just to kind of get your, your feet on the ground and make you feel comfortable. Um, and then after that, we will evaluate. And sometimes we have individual study halls or, you know, study groups, uh, stuff like that, 
We also do progress reports for all of our student athletes, regardless of their year and regardless of their GPA. Um, that's every two weeks. I want a sheet signed by all of your professors, just giving me a general update. And this is more than just, you know, it's not an aha, gotcha type of moment. Uh, it's a, it's a check-in of our students. So if in weeks one and two, um, you know, Alexandra is, is getting all positive comments, you know, really participating, great energy, handing in all their assignments, enthusiastic about her work. And then weeks three and four, um, you know, sitting in the back of class, missed this class a few times late on her phone, sleeping in class, you know, sure, I'd be disappointed, but there's definitely something going on that, that made that behavior change. And, you know, being her, you know, older brother, you know, father type figure on campus, I want to, I want to help her figure out what's going on. Other things that are available at most campuses, writing center, regardless of the type of, of paper that you're writing, there are people, um, professionals who are able to help um, edit, proofread, and help you with formatting um, and citations and stuff like that. Um, free tutoring, so really I think across the board, tutoring has changed um, in college and it's no longer, you know, you pay you know, somebody older, a professor or former professor or something like that to, to teach you. It's more getting the, the upperclassmen students involved and having them do, so we have it called um, SI sessions, which are, you know, student-led, reteach opportunities um, and then also we have drop-in hours so for instance the school of business the college of business at our at our university um, four times a week for two hours uh, a day they have drop-in hours where if you're taking any business class you just go in with that question on the concept or a homework problem and they'll be able to help you the third one um, what does a typical day look like in in the life of your student athletes this is super important i listed division one division two II, division three how they're different I love Division Three because it is voluntary, but at the same time, we have big aspirations in our program, um, and with that comes a lot of work, you know, in the unseen hours and in the time that, you know, you're not getting paid to do it at the at the Division Three level. I'm not there to force you to do it. I'm not supposed to know whether or not you're putting in the work, but but like we always say, you know, you're going to find out in October, November, December how much work you did over the summer. Um, so finding out their preseason schedule for us. Uh, our players love to have a really intensive September, um, go five days a week, a lot of 6 a.m.s, you know, conditioning and, and weight training and all that, kind of to see who's in and who's out. And if, you know, if you have one foot in and one foot out, you're probably not going to make it in our program. Um, Division two and Division th and Division one, they both have more hours with their coaches in the preseason, um, working on skill work type stuff. In season, you know, how long are the practices? How much film do you do? What's uh, required of me? Um, we have a rehab room, so you know, when, what are those hours, et cetera, and kind of building your schedule around that. And then also ask, you know, that subsection point there for winter, winter sports like basketball. What about the time when classes aren't in session? Um, you know, how many double sessions do you do? Uh, what else do you do to fill that time? And then postseason for us would be, you know, March and April after the season's done right around spring break. We like to give them, you know, some time off and, and let them recover and reflect and focus on, on getting back on track and schoolwork. And then we'll have individual meetings and then kind of, you know, give them a general plan of what we hope that they would accomplish between April and August on their own. Um, and, and really, I think the big thing to ask with that are follow up questions. So if a coach is telling you, you know, maybe as an incoming freshman, you know, something that you really need to prepare for in the college game is being able to, to attack with both hands. Um, I think you need to ask, you know, okay, do you have a few suggestions of drills that you do during the season that can prepare me for next year? Um, because I think sometimes, Coaches just leave that open-ended and, you know, especially postseason meetings. So after your freshman year, you didn't play a lot and you want to know why. And they just say, well, you can't attack with, with both hands. So you got to work on this this summer. All right, see you later. And I think asking them for the drills um, that'll make you better will put a little bit more responsibility on your coach to help you get better. Question four, what does the travel schedule look like? Being a student athlete is, is difficult. It definitely is. It's time consuming and all that, especially with travel. Um, in our conference, um, no opponent is more than like four hours and 15 minutes away. So we, we travel by, uh, by bus all over, but, um, another school that's about an hour away from us, they play bigger schools. Um, and they are, they are traveling mostly by plane or bus trips of over five hours. So that could be a big, you know, a big difference. And then find out, you know, if you have a class conflict, um, how do you go about missing class? How are the professors in handling that? What policies are in place to protect you as a student, et cetera. Um, and then find out what a typical road trip looks like. Do you travel with the men's team? Are you opposite the men's team? Um, do you travel by bus or by van? That could be a big difference. Um, you know, what, 
how hands-on is the coach during the road trip? How long is the road trip? So if it's a two-day road trip, is there study time made available? Are you doing team activities? Um, or are you just seeing each other really for meals and shoot around? So that's, that would give you a good you know, inside look at, as to how the coach runs the team. How would your players describe you? That's something you should ask the coach. Um, and, and really the important thing is, are you consistent? So, um, you know, are you, are you the same in practice as you are in games? Or are you more intense in one or the other? Um, when you're in the classroom teaching or, you know, somebody comes to my office and we watch film together or we're going over things on the whiteboard, um, am I the same way? Am I, am I cognizant of their learning process? And am I teaching in different varieties so that everybody can learn? And then you really find out what the coach's values are. And if they're consistent um, about being like, I would say, ways that, that our student athletes describe me are, you know, passionate, energetic, those kinds of things. Um, you know, I'm pretty consistent with that um, across the board. And then I think it, it really matters going back to the first point when you're in times of need and you're looking for that, like I said, older brother or, or fatherly figure on campus, you know, you have an emergency or you have something that you're really vulnerable about talking about, you know, can you trust that coach and, and that that coach will be empathetic and, and listen and, and, and be able to help you in some way, shape or form. Next one, how involved are your students on campus? This is especially important to me in Division Three, and that's really why I, I love Division Three. is, you know, you're not just here to be a basketball player and um, a psychology student. You're here to get the whole student athlete experience. And it's my job to help you build your resume, not just the top part that says, you know, your name, your address, email address, and phone number, and your high school and college education and GPAs. We're trying to build all that stuff below. Um, so, you know, being involved on campus, that's super important. If you think about going on a job interview or somebody looking over your resume um, and they see that you were a, a four-year student athlete, regardless of how much you, you played, how much playing time you had, you were committed to whatever it is, 75 times in the gym plus 25 games, 100 days, you know, you were committed to being in the gym plus the time that you put on uh, or, or put forth in the off season, et cetera. Um, but if you're involved in, in other clubs and activities, um, some examples, the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, those are the people that advocate for the student athletes. For instance, uh, our student, our SAC group um, a few years ago really went to the AD and said, I, I think the next step for our department would be to get a varsity weight room. Sure enough, through some fundraising, we were able to do that two years ago. Academic major clubs, or, so athletic training, um, if that's your major, they have a club for that. And just being involved there and showing your face, um, you know, that's good for your reputation. Academic fraternities. Um, so for instance, we have one, I think if you have over a three, six and you played at least two years of college athletics, um, you're, you're in an ac uh, athletic fraternity. Um, and then general interest clubs, like we have um, snowboarding, chess, stuff like that. And then what jobs are, are available in the community? There's a difference between work study and non-work study. So work study is money that the government gives you to kind of help you, you know, pay for some stuff through college. Work study is not guaranteed. Um, so there are also non-work study jobs, which are just like you trying to find a regular job. Um, very common ones for athletes are working the front desk of, the, of your weight room, game day operations. So maybe helping, um, you know, be a, a, a ball person in a soccer game or working the scoreboard, um, working the dining halls, libraries, being an RA, um, which is, you know, you working in the dorms, kind of being in, in charge of a floor. Um, being a tutor, that's a great one for, for building leadership. And then working in a campus center type thing in a bookstore, mailroom, coffee shop, something like that. Number seven, what, what do you do to connect with the campus and community? So how are your players reaching and showing their appreciation to the community? Um, common one are running camps and clinics, youth and sports day type events. Um, this year we did reading in schools. So for about two hours over winter break, we went to an elementary school, kindergarten, I think kindergarten, first grade, second grade. And, you know, our, our girls absolutely loved it. Um, you know, because while you had, you know, nasty first graders climbing all over you um, and getting too close and <laughs> breaking your personal bubble, you were their hero for a day. And there's no doubt that that, that evening they went home to their parents and, and they told them all about how they met, you know, the most famous athlete in the world. Um, really cool event. Uh, same thing with the second group of bullets, you know, helping out um, people who might not be able to do yard work type stuff, um, going to bingo and, and connecting with uh, and people at an elderly home like that was, that's been really special for us the last two years because, you know, we have some people who have lost their grandparents or never met their grandparents or don't see them because they live far away. And at the same time, you know, we know that there are people who can't see their grandchildren or their grandchildren aren't in touch anymore. And, you know, you never know anybody's story and being able to connect with people of all ages is really important to us. And then the last thing 
we're big. We've had a lot of people affected by cancer in our program. And so the last two years, we've done these three things, Relay for Life um, for breast cancer. We've uh, worn gold shoelaces for pediatric cancer. And then we raised uh, almost $2,000 this year on our Play for K pink game um, in February. Last three here. What research internship opportunities are there through your university? Um, so this is to advance you as a student and really make that resume pop. Um, I'm not sure it's called the Career Development Center uh, on all campuses, but this is one, you know, this is a place that you need to find. They will take you through mock interviews, critique your resume. They'll, they're the ones that will offer the job fairs. They're the ones who you just email or go to and you say, hey, you know, I live in this area. Are there any, you know, summer internships available um, for me to apply to, et cetera? And then you got to find out the details about whether they're paid or unpaid. We have a program that started two years ago called Apex, which is basically our university um, through some donations offers $1,000 to all juniors and seniors um, for internships. So that could be for gas money because you're traveling an hour each day. That could be for professional clothing, equipment needed, et cetera. And then find out the difference between co-ops and summer internships and local internships. So a summer internship might be something either close to the college or close to your home that you're obviously working over the summer when there aren't classes. A local internship could be something in semester where twice a week for three hours a day, when it fits in your schedule, you're going and putting in hours. Um, and then a co-op is kind of where you take a semester off from college and you're working basically full-time hands-on. And then this will show you how strong their alumni connections are, which are really important when you graduate finding jobs, and then how much they value the hands-on experience that you can talk about in that middle portion of your resume. By my senior year, where do you see this program? Getting the basketball here. Um, you know, most people are going to talk about a championship or, or winning, um, but, but you got to find out what are the next few benchmarks and, and are they just focused on the end result or can they kind of guide you through the process and the next steps taken? Is it all wins and losses? Um, do they mention the development of you as a student athlete? Something that I try to mention that's really important to me is what's our graduation rate like and our job placement like and, you know, what's our team GPA, community service hours, all those things that go into being a Division three athlete are, are as important, if not more important, than just the wins and losses. Um, because I think it would be really shallow of me just to be, you know, the basketball coach for these for these young ladies and, and kind of develop them and, and teach them how to how to make an impact on the world outside of the basketball court. And then last one is, is getting in contact with somebody on the team. Maybe it would be somebody, you know, of a similar major or somebody who lives nearby. So, you know, whenever we have players from maybe, you know, a plane rides distance away, you know, I have a few players that on our team that are, that are in a similar situation. And I think that they connect pretty well, but you'll, you'll definitely get the truth by asking the same exact questions to the players. So the coaches might be, you know, like I said, a used car salesman and try and sell you everything that sounds good. And then you get there and, you know, it's nothing like what it seems. But I don't think the players do that as often. So, you know, I, I like to be as honest and, and transparent as possible. And our players, you know, try to do the same as well. And hopefully our answers match somewhat um, decently so that you get a good perspective. But if they're not matching, that's a real red flag because either the players are, you know, not listening to, to what the coach is hoping that they do or they're not using the resources on campus that the coach says that all the players use, et cetera. Um, and it'll give you great insight on that player-coach relationship and respect. Um, it gives you a glimpse into the team dynamic and see what kind of people they are and are they being intentional about having meaningful conversations or are they just, you know, hey, let me know if you need anything or if you have any questions, let me know. And then if you get in an on-campus visit, hopefully you've built a relationship and you have some trust and you can really find out, you know, if it's the right fit for you. But also at the same time, you can see how the players are evaluating you. So do they, you know, do they realize that your competitive personality um, and your skill set from when you might have played pickup with them, like, wow, you'd be a great fit for us. You'd really help us. Or are they going to, you know, just because of, you know, your personality, like, wow, you're really fun. You'd fit in here because of your personality. Or the third one, which is a sad reality, is, you know, they're going to kind of drop off after they get to know you because you're competition and you might take away that senior's minutes knowing that you're tougher than them, you're more competitive, um, you're more resilient, and, and you have a higher ceiling. So I think, you know, talking to a player on the team will give you a, a really good perspective. And through these 10 questions here, hopefully, you know, you can get some more, you know, in-depth responses that really help you figure out whether or not that college is a good fit for you. Good luck in the process.